Transcribed. Now listen to Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Crosley, makers of pace-setting products for happier living. Crosley Automatic Television. Oh, boy. Beautiful Crosley Shelvador Refrigerators, the world's most convenient. Wonderful Crosley Automatic Electric Ranges. Crosley Shelvador Freezers, color style radios, and many other leading home appliances. The things women do to their hair. They wash it, they oil it, they put eggs in it. They dry it, they dye it, they fade it, they braid it. But most of the time, they're bending it into little waves. Just look into the white frame house on Maple Street, where Margaret and Betty Anderson are engaged in Operation Permanent. Like this. Mother, we've been at this since 8.30 this morning, and now it's noon. Are you sure you know how to give a permanent? I'm doing the best I can. But it's so important. I want Bill Higgins to be proud of me tonight. Here. Now I'll start taking the curlers out. He's coming all the way down from Tech for my sorority dance. Hi, Mommy. Hello, Angel. <coughs> Is Bill Higgins here yet? He's at the Oliver Hotel downtown. I can hardly wait to see him. He sounds important. He is. I'm wearing his pin. Pin? Safety pin? <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand, Angel. This is a fraternity pin. How does my hair look, Mother? Well... Oh, I think your hair looks very pretty. You do? Uh-huh. It hangs straight down, just like a pony's tail. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to curl. Give me the mirror quick. Oh, no! It doesn't do anything. It just lays there. I thought I followed the directions. Who's Bill Higgins? Oh, Mother, what am I going to do about my hair? Margaret, I'm home. Daddy's home. Hi, kitten. Hello, honey. Betty. Hi, Daddy. Hello, Father. Hello, dear. You're home early. Yes, I'm tired. Well, go into the den and relax. Is this today's mail on the table? Yes. I've had my hands full all morning. I don't even know what they are. Well, I'll look them over in the den. Mother, my hair. Only a beauty parlor can straighten this out. I've already straightened it out. The problem now is to get it curled. <laughs> It'll need more than that. Maybe a whole new hairdo. I know, I'll get a poodle cut. Yeah, but who can tell the difference between you and Bill Higgins? <laughs> I don't know, Betty. It seems a little radical to me. Hiya, lunch ready? Hi, bud. I haven't had time, bud. I've been busy with Betty. She has a date. <laughs> What's so funny about my going out with Bill Higgins? Bill Higgins? You remember him, bud. I haven't seen Bill in months, and look at me, I'm a mess. Well, you want him to recognize you, don't you? <laughs> bud, go talk to your father. Where is he? In the den. Okay. You can tell him lunch will be ready soon. Okay, I'll tell him. Well, hiya, Dan. Hello, bud. Mom says lunch will be ready pretty quick. I'm not very hungry. Say, what happened to you? Something wrong? Well, no, not if you're in the habit of walking around with your clothes all pulled out. Oh, Joe Phillips and I are getting up a wrestling team at school. Want me to show you a flying mare? No, thanks. I'm wrestling with some bills. This one from the doctor. This one from the garage. This... Hmm, there's a letter for your mother. I'd better take it to her. Really, Betty, a poodle cut is so extreme. Please, Mother. Let me think about it. In the meantime, get your gown out of the closet. I still have some sewing to do on it. All right, I'll run up and get it. There's a letter for you, Margaret. Thank you. Well, from Ronald Atkins. Really? Ronald Atkins? What do you know? <laughs> oh, isn't this exciting? It certainly is. Margaret. Yes? Who was Ronald Atkins? <laughs> you remember. When we were in college, he was one of my most ardent admirers. Ronald Atkins. That's funny. I can't place him. I haven't heard from him in 20 years. You had so many admirers. 
Uh, was he the one who used to follow you around like a sheepdog? No, dear, that was you. <laughs> Imagine, after all this time, he finally writes. I wonder what's on his mind. What, whatever it is, he's 20 years and three children too late. <laughs> oh, oh, he was such a lively boy. Oh, sure, I remember him now, the all-around athlete. That's right. The man with muscles like iron. And head to match. <laughs> I wonder why he wrote. Well, open it. Let's hear what Superman has to say. Unless, of course, you'd rather read it alone. Oh, Jim, don't be silly. Jim, listen. He says he's coming through town and is very anxious to see me. Hmm. He got my address from the Alumni Association. How nice. <laughs> oh, poor Ronald He took my marriage to you pretty hard Uh, does he say anything about me in there? Yes, he does He says, my best regards to the president of the poetry club I was never president of the poetry club Well, you only lost by one vote <laughs> Poetry club <laughs> After all, I won my letter in school too, you know Of course you did Two years in a row Captain of the squash team <laughs> Ronald Atkins. Now, look here, Margaret. That was 20 years ago. Oh, those were the days, weren't they, dear? You're happy now, aren't you, honey? Certainly, Jim. But then we were carefree and gay. There was nothing on our minds but what dress to wear to what dance and what boy was taking us. That was never on my mind. <laughs> oh, Jim, you know what I mean. Those romantic days of youth. They were fine, honey, but times change. People change. You can't live in the past. Jim, wouldn't it be wonderful you serenading me in the moonlight again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I'd wake up the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, you're getting old. Margaret, just because an old beau of yours is coming to town is no reason to start getting giddy about it. Oh, Jim. Those days are gone. Hmm. I wonder. Well, uh, excuse me. I have to get back to the dear, carefree days of today. Paying bills. Uh, I'll be in the den. Mother! Mother, I laid the dress out on the bed. Mother? Hmm? Oh, oh. What's the matter? Nothing, dear. I, I was just thinking. Oh, well, back to reality. Mother, what about my hairdo? <clears throat> Betty, a girl is only young once. I want you to go down and get your hair done. Oh, creepers, that's wonderful. I'll phone for an appointment. And, dear, I'm going with you. I want to be sure they don't go to extremes. Hello? Nancy's Beauty Shop? Margaret, there's a bill here from Western Hello, this is Mrs. Anderson. I... Oh, excuse me. I'd like to make an appointment this afternoon for a haircut in the setting. Well, I was thinking of a poodle cut, but I don't know. Uh, you really think so? All right. Put me down for four. Poodle cut. Was there something you wanted, Jim? Uh, did you say poodle cut? <laughs> yes. Margaret, don't you think you're acting a little silly about all this? Jim... A girl should do everything she can to keep herself looking young and pretty. I see. Especially for the important events in her life. Important events? You call him an important event? Naturally. Now, did you want something? Uh, no. No, I guess not. Well, excuse me. I've got some fast sewing to do on a dress. Come on, Betty. You can help me. Well, if that doesn't beat all, a poodle cut... Gosh, Mom's sure in a hurry. Where's she going? I'm not sure. It's either a beauty parlor or a veterinarian. <laughs> She's in a big hurry to fix a dress for herself. What's all that for? Bud, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that a girl should do everything she can to keep herself looking young and pretty? Is that a fact? Especially for the important events in her life. Thinks I'm getting old, does she? Excited about Ronald Atkins, huh? <laughs> I hope my son is spared this when he gets married. Married? Dad? Yes? I'm not getting married. Who said you were? You did. 
Well, don't be frightened. It happens to a lot of people. <laughs> you mean married to a girl? Somehow it seems to work out better that way. <laughs> Don't let your wife start taking you for granted. Okay, I'll tell her. There'll come a time when the excitement has died down and she thinks you're pretty dull. Of course, it works both ways. By this time, you're probably taking your wife a little too much for granted. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the danger point, because when women get to a certain age, they start acting silly. They do? They expect to be catered to. And by Caesar, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Do what? Dad, what are you talking about? Huh? What? I said, what are you talking about? Talking? Bud, the time for talking is past. It's now time for action. Excuse me, I'm going down to the barbershop and get spruced up a bit. <laughs> and I think I'll stop by and order some flowers and, uh... Yes, some candy, too. Yes, that's exactly what I'll do. Hi, Daddy. Excuse me, kitten, I'm in a hurry. Kathy, how old is Dad? Well, he has a driver's license, so I guess he's at least 18. <laughs> Why? I was just thinking, when men get to a certain age, they start acting silly, too. lovely and talented Hollywood star, Margaret Lindsay. Hi there. You know, without television, you're not only missing great entertainment like the wonderful Paul Winchell, Jerry Mahoney show, you also miss on-the-spot history-making events like the forthcoming political conventions and presidential campaigns. That's why I urge you to buy TV now. And before you buy, be sure to see and compare Crosley Automatic Television. You see, Crosley brings you the brightest, clearest, sharpest TV picture possible, even in poor reception areas, automatically. That means all you do is tune the station you want with the Crosley Unituner, just like tuning a radio. From there on, your Crosley adjusts itself automatically to give you uninterrupted enjoyment of the finest picture and performance in television. You never have to fuss with controls to keep the picture clear and interference-free. You never have to jump up to adjust the sound. For with Crosley, when the picture's right, the sound's right automatically. If you see for yourself, watch Crosley Automatic Television in action at your Crosley dealer. In picture, in performance, in the outstanding beauty of its authentically styled cabinets, you'll say Crosley is television at its finest. Priced to make you doubly happy. <laughs> There comes a time when a man must do something to make an impression on his wife so that she doesn't regard him as merely a fixture around the house. Or so Jim Anderson reasons. It is now one hour, one shade, one shoe shine, and one dash of cologne later. Feeling like a million, Jim is homeward bound. The flowers and candy he's ordered for Margaret already on their way. Will these gifts do the job he's expecting? Well, let's see. Mother's upstairs sewing my dress. Don't disturb her. Look what a delivery boy just brought her. Let me see that. Are you sure it's for her? The boy said for Mrs. Anderson. Oh, you must have heard wrong. Who in the world would be sending Mother candy? Well, that's what I thought he said. Wait a minute. To the sweetest little girl in the world. Well, of course, he must have said Miss Anderson. Oh, then I guess it's for me. <laughs> for you? This is probably from Bill Higgins, for me. Oh, they're so pretty. Should I take this one or this one? Kathy, don't bite into it and put it back. Here, take the box into my room. Can I have the box afterwards? I don't care. Dear, here's your dress. I just finished it. Oh, Mother, it's lovely. Oh, I'll run upstairs and try it on. Front door, Mother. Go ahead, dear. I'll get it. Yes? Mrs. Margaret Anderson? Yes? Delivery from Vogel, the florist. Flowers for me? Who could have sent them? Who knows? 
I just get paid for delivering, lady, not for snooping. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. Mommy! In here, Kathy. Mommy, Betty just got a big... Oh, what's in the box? Flowers, dear. May I see them? There. Roses. Gosh, they're pretty. They're beautiful. But I... I don't understand. Oh, here's a card. To Margaret. I've never stopped loving you. <gasps> oh. Oh, this is dreadful. May I have one rose, Mommy? The impertinence of the man. Just one, Mommy. The very idea. Ronald Atkins should know better than that. Margaret, I'm home. Kathy, quick, throw these flowers away. Where will I throw them? I don't care. The trash box, any place. All right, Mommy. Hello, honey. Oh, why, Jim, have you been out? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Didn't you know I was gone? Uh, no, I've been very busy. Oh, How'd the, uh, the dress come out? Oh, just fine. It's really lovely. That's nice. And the uh, beauty parlor? Oh, that's not till four. I see. Did, uh, did anything arrive while I was out? Arrive? I mean, uh, anything come or uh, anything like that? <laughs> mm, no. Nothing? Well, nothing of any importance. I see. Well, I'll be in the den finishing up those bills if anything... I, I mean, if you need me. All right, dear. Nothing arrived. I wonder if that floor is... Hello, Daddy. Oh, hi, kitten. Well, who put that big red rose in your hair? I did. Awfully pretty. Where'd you get it? I took one from the bouquet. Bouquet? What bouquet? Well, that Mommy told me to throw away. <laughs> throw away? Where? Right there in the wastebasket. She threw away my flowers? My flowers? I've got to do something. Fast. Kathy, Mom says if you're going to a show tonight, you've got to take your afternoon nap now. Okay, I'm going. Bud, I want you to do something for me. Yeah? You know that big old trunk in the attic? There's some things in there I want you to bring down here. What kind of things? She likes the past so much. I'll bring it back to her. What kind of things? Oh, you'll find some old college pictures, an old sweater, a few things like that. Okay. What do you want all that stuff for? For fuel, bud. For fuel. <laughs> I'm going to try to rekindle an old flame. <laughs> Boy, this sure is a lot of junk. But that junk, as you call it, represents a lot of romantic memories for your mother and me. What do you want me to do with these pictures? Oh, well, put them around the room where your mother can see them. I want a reminder of the time we fell in love. How about this old sweater with the M on it? Now, that's my varsity sweater. Varsity sweater? What team, Dad? The squash team. Holy cow, they had a team for squash? Certainly. Was that for growing it or eating it? <laughs> It used to be a very popular sport once, bud. Oh. Well, what do you want the sweater now for? It's full of holes. Right after I got it, your mother and I went to the varsity drag. Uh, drape it on the chair where she can see it. Oh, okay. Jim. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, look, Margaret, I uh, accidentally ran across some of these things from school. Where were they? At the bottom uh, of the old trunk, way up in the attic, under four dusty boxes. Bud. <laughs> Never mind. These bring back memories, don't they, honey? What have you done to this room? Oh, uh, just brighten it up a bit. A few pictures and some uh, other stuff here and there. You uh, like it? Uh, dear, none of it goes with the color scheme at all. Oh. Well, you see, Bud and I, we were uh, just discussing athletics. Weren't we, Bud? We were? Yes. Uh... I was very interested in the wrestling team Bud and the boys are starting in school. Huh? Come on, bud. Uh, show me that flying mare again. Again? I'll teach you a defense for that hole. Okay. Now, Jim, be careful. Careful? Listen, I can certainly go in for a little vigorous exercise if I want to. Come at me, bud. 
Okay. Jim, look out. The throw rug. Watch this, Margaret. <laughs> Jim! <laughs> Jim? Oh, oh. Dear, get up. I... I slipped on that darn rug. <laughs> oh, dear, I warned you. Oh, I'll, I'll be okay. Just a little sprain. I'll, uh... I'll go get some liniment. <laughs> now, bud... Don't blame me. I'll get it. That must be why they call it a throw rug. <laughs> yeah? Uh, Miss Betty Anderson? Yeah. Here you are, Betty. <laughs> Cut it out. What's this? A bouquet of flowers. Uh, Vogel, the florist. Okay, Vogel. <laughs> Betty! I'm in the kitchen. They just delivered this bouquet of flowers for you. Flowers? For me? Ooh, daffodils and iris. Bill promised he'd send them to me. You'll always be my best girl. Call me in room 415 Oliver Hotel and let me know what time you want me to pick you up tonight. Oh, he's so sweet. I'll put these in water right now. There. Bud, carry these into the living room for me. I have a million other things I have to do. Holy cow. I always have to carry things to somebody around here. Just a mule, that's all I am. <laughs> My back. Hey, flowers. Yeah. So long. What's this? You'll always be my best girl. Call me in room 415, Holiday <laughs> Hotel, and let me know what time you want me to pick you up tonight. Tonight? So Musclehead is in town. <laughs> well, that does it. My flowers she throws away, but the ones from Atkins she keeps. Oh, wait till I tell him more. Try to break up my home, will he? Well, I'll tell him. Hello, Oliver Hotel. Uh, room 415, please. Sneaking around behind my back. Oh, my back. <laughs> Hello? Listen, you, you, you Bush League Romeo. This is Jim Anderson. I've had just about enough of you. Yes, you. The Anderson family's been perfectly happy without you for a long time. I don't want you to ever show your face in my house. If you do, I won't be responsible for what happens. Jim, I've been looking for you. I just want to tell and you. And I want to tell you something, Margaret. It's about time we... Yes, it is. Hold still, dear. <laughs> well, what was that for? For just seeing you. Margaret, now as far as this whole silly business is concerned... Oh, Jim, it isn't silly. It's wonderful. Wonderful? Those pictures, that old sweater. You were trying your best to make me remember. Well, I... Twenty years ago when I first fell in love with you. But, uh, honey, why didn't you acknowledge my gifts? The candy and flowers. Flowers? Good heavens. They were your flowers? You threw them away. Jim, I didn't know. I thought... And you kept the other bouquet, the one from Musclehead. I didn't get another one from Musclehead. I mean, Atkins. Well, I told him off all right. I told him that I... You didn't get any from Atkins? No, and I didn't get any candy from you either. Oh. Then who did I... Oh, this is terrible. Jim, what about the candy? Oh! It's Kathy. What happened? What's wrong? Oh, my stomach, it hurts. Oh. Jim, look. The box of candy I sent. It's half empty. And every piece that's left has been bitten into. Oh. How did she get it? Oh, no, no, no. Now what's up? Betty, come in here. How could he do that? How could he do such an awful thing? How could who do such an awful thing? Father. It's not hard. I've been practicing all day. 
What did I do now? Called up Bill Higgins and told him not to come here. Oh, that's who it was. Jim, Jim how could you? Well, I, I, I thought it was Ronald Atkins. He called up to break the date and he never wants to see me again. Now, wait a minute. I can straighten this all out in a jiffy. Betty, get Bill on the phone for me. Oh, honey, I really messed things up today. Broken date, misunderstandings, sprained back, stomach ache. And you did it all for me. Oh, Jim, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> No doubt about it. For top entertainment and history-making events, 1952 will be the biggest year in television programming. See these programs as they happen with Crosley Automatic Television. With Crosley, you're assured of peak picture performance on any channel in any viewing area. And with Crosley Automatic TV, you never have to get up to eliminate picture disturbances. That's done for you automatically. You never have to get up to keep the picture steady or match the sound of the picture. Your Crosley takes care of all that automatically. And that's true even in poor reception areas. For Crosley automatically boosts a weak signal to peak picture performance. At your Crosley dealer, see Crosley Automatic Television. It's television at its finest. Priced to make you doubly happy. <laughs> Well, things are peaceful once again in the Anderson household. It's the next morning, and Jim and Margaret are at the breakfast table. <laughs> What's the matter, dear? <laughs> I was just thinking of Ronald Atkins last night when he came through the door. What's funny about that? He could hardly get through the door. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a man who not only kept his figure, he doubled it. <laughs> now, Jim... His wife, Laura's kind of cute, though. Hasn't changed much, either. Just imagine. Little Laura Blake with three children. Mm, that was a surprise, is being married to Laura. They got married right after we did. When we were all in school, she used to be pretty sweet on me. Almost broke her up when I married you. Now, Jim, that was 20 years ago. I know. Laura and I were talking about it last night. She thinks I'm still a pretty romantic guy. <laughs> Jim. Yes, honey. <laughs> Stop trying to live in the past. Pass the butter, please. <laughs> now, add lovely new color to your home and at the same time enjoy the newest and best in radio reception. See and hear Crosley's popular color-styled radios. They're specially tone-engineered to give you clear, strong reception from stations near and far without fading or blasting. And these charming decorator-designed Crosley color-styled radios come in a variety of color combinations at no extra charge. There's one just right for your favorite room. See your Crosley dealer tomorrow. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargie's orchestra. In our cast were Gene Vanderpeil as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Norma Jean Nilsson. So until next week at this same time, good night and good luck from the Crosley Division of the Avco Manufacturing Corporation, America's leading manufacturer of today's pace-setting refrigerators, television and radio sets, electric ranges, home freezers, and many other products for happier living. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Lee Carson. Now it's Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons on NBC.